Welcome, and thank you for joining us for a webinar to discuss the changes that have been made to the recently published 46th edition of API Specification 5L. Our goal is to highlight the differences between the 45th and 46th editions. This webinar will include the following. An overview of the specification for line pipe, a bit of the history of the development of the 5L document, some of the specific changes that make the 46th edition different from the 45th, and we'll end with a brief discussion of the future of the 5L document and how you may become involved in the process if you are not already. One note before we begin. API 5L, as well as the attached presentation, expresses data with units of measurement from both International Standard, abbreviated as SI or metric, and United States Customary, USC. For simplicity, this discussion will only use US customary units. So, why do we need a specification for line pipe? This slide shows the major U.S. pipelines that stretch across the country. The color legend describes the purpose for each pipeline. Red denotes crude oil, blue denotes products, and green denotes CO2. This slide shows all the branches that have been developed. It does not include all the individual product lines to homes and businesses. These pipelines often cross state lines in multiple legal jurisdictions. They pass over and under rivers and highways. They represent almost every possible combination of pipe diameter, wall thickness, and grade. And they have been manufactured using almost every possible pipe manufacturing process and from a wide range of starting materials, steel plates, coils, billets, and so forth. API Specification 5L provides requirements for the manufacture of two product specification levels, PSL1 and PSL2, of seamless and welded steel pipe for use in pipeline transportation systems in the petroleum and natural gas industries, and is not applicable to cast pipe. The following slides cover a brief overview of 5L. The scope of the document is to specify the requirements for manufacturing two product specification levels, PSL1 and PSL2, in seamless or welded pipe for use in pipeline transportation systems in the petroleum and natural gas industries. API 5L covers pipe grades A25 to X120, where the number associated with the grade is the approximate yield strength of the product in 1,000 pounds per square inch. A25 would indicate a yield strength of approximately 25,000 pounds per square inch. The actual test pressure due to rounding from SI units is 25,400 pounds per square inch. Several manufacturing methods are covered. The only methods for PSL2 are SMLS, seamless pipe formed while hot with no weld, HFW, high frequency welded pipe with no filler material, SAW, submerged arc welded pipe with filler material, and COW, combination welded pipe with filler material. Within limits, welded pipe may have one or two straight seams designated with the letter L or one helical seam designated with the letter H. Note, helical is often called spiral. Starting material is steel and may be billets, ingots, blooms, coils, or plates. The 5L specification covers a wide range of pipe diameters, 
from 0.405 inch to 84 inches. Pipe wall thickness also has a wide range, from 0.068 inch to over 2 inches. Note that all the different diameters cannot be made in each thickness. The ratio of diameter to thickness is known as the D to T ratio. Industry professionals do not agree on an exact range for D to T ratio. API 5L ensures communication between the purchaser and the manufacturer. Paragraph 7 of the document lists 94 items of information that are to be supplied by the purchaser. These are itemized to make sure that there is clear understanding of the requirements for the product that is being ordered. Many of the requirements for an order are determined when the description of the product is defined. API 5L defines the tolerances on the finished products including chemical composition, mechanical properties, dimensional measurements. Tables 4 through 16 provide quick references for most of these tolerances. Table 17 for PSL1 pipe and Table 18 for PSL2 pipe provide a list of all the inspections as well as the required frequency of each inspection. Table 18 describes the frequency of 28 inspections. Note that since the type of inspection is dependent upon the type of pipe, some of the listed inspections may not be required. Tables 19 through 21 and figures 5 through 9 provide assistance with the number, orientation, location, and size of the test pieces. This figure is an example of the information that is provided. It shows the orientation and locations of test pieces for pipe with straight weld seams. There are similar figures for seamless and helical pipe. The requirements for non-destructive testing are covered in Annex E. For certain orders of pipe, the non-destructive requirement of Annex K may also apply. In addition to the main body of text, there are 19 annexes, Annex A through Annex P, and purchasers may add additional requirements from their company's supplemental specification. Before we take a close look at the 46th edition, here's a brief history of how we got here. The first edition of API 5L was published 90 years ago, in 1928. During its first 50 years, there were three 5L documents. In 1982, all three documents were combined into one, API 5L. In 2000, the 42nd edition introduced product specification levels 1 and 2. Many of the requirements that previously had to be ordered individually were made standard practice for PSL2 pipe. Requirements such as fracture toughness, maximum yield strength, carbon equivalent, limits on several chemical elements, and product traceability records. About the same time, the desire for common standards that could be used worldwide became a priority. While work on harmonization of common standards was underway, the 43rd edition was published in 2004. The 44th edition of 5L was published in 2007 as a result of harmonization efforts and also included new requirements for manufacturers. One such new requirement was that this was the first time dimensions and tolerances in U.S. customary units were rounded from SI units. This rounding is why the A25 test pressure is now 25,400 instead of 25,000. The 45th edition of 5L, published in 2012, had updates and requirements from further harmonization efforts. 
such as all the pointers from Annex N being updated in sections for which they were intended. And this brings us up to date with the new edition. This is the cover of the 46th edition. You may notice that the title does not read Specification 4 Line Pipe, just Line Pipe, and the words API Monogram Program have been added before the effective date. So, what is new with the 46th edition? Before we talk about what has changed, let's look at what stayed the same. Those familiar with the 45th edition should have no problem using the 46th. In fact, all 27 tables and 9 figures that were present in the 45th are still present and similarly named. Some of the information in the tables and figures has changed, but more on that in a minute. There have been some very obvious changes to the 5L document. One change is a return to more traditional U.S. grammar and numerals. For example, commas are again used in U.S.C. numbers as thousands separators. You will see 25 comma 400 instead of 25 space 400. Decimal points are used instead of commas in SI decimal fractions. You will now see 10 decimal point 5 millimeters instead of 10 comma 5 millimeters. And the spelling of some words is more traditional. You will notice color spelled C-O-L-O-R instead of C-O-L-O-U-R, and meter spelled M-E-T-E-R, not M-E-T-R-E. -E. The topics in paragraphs 1 through 5 have minor changes. The scope now includes the requirements of new Annex A, provided the product is to be manufactured in an API licensed facility with the intent to bear the monogram. The paragraph Normative References has been moved, revised, and resorted by title. All the terms, definitions, symbols, and abbreviations have been combined into paragraph 3, and conformity is now found in paragraph 4. Compliance to the specification is now a new paragraph 5, and the new paragraph contains two new subparagraphs, other terms and definitions, and references to annexes. The titles and topics of the remaining paragraphs 6 through 14 remain unchanged. So, what's new in the 46th edition? Pipe end straightness is not a new concept. However, paragraph 9.11.3.4b and figure 2 define changes to how the measurement is taken, as well as the tolerance. The old tolerance was 0.156 inch over the last 4 feet. The new tolerance is 0.125 inch over the last 5 feet. And pipe end squareness is not a new concept. Even though the acceptance tolerance remains the same, a new paragraph, 9.12.6, and a revised figure 3 add a new definition and instructions. Table 22 defines the relationship between the pipe diameter and wall dimensions and the size of the Sharpie test sample that is required. The values in Table 22 were recalculated and some values are new. Manufacturers will need to check Table 22 to ensure that they are preparing the proper size Sharpie sample. A new Note 2 has also been added to Table 22, advising that there should be no conversion between SI and USC units of measure when calculating Sharpie size. Note that there has been no change to the dimensions of the finished Sharpie samples. 
The change is only in determining the largest size sample that is attainable based on pipe diameter and wall thickness. This is the revised Table 22. Annex A used to be the location for welded jointers. The jointers annex has been reassigned to Annex M to make room for the new Annex A. API is in the process of adding an Annex A to all product specifications to show the link between the product specification and the API monogram program. This informative annex for licensees describes the requirements that become normative if the API monogram is to be applied to the product. Annexes B, C, D, E, F, G, I, K, L, O, and P are essentially unchanged. Annex H and Annex J have been revised to add new figure H, 1D and J1D, respectively. The figure is the same in Annexes H, J, and the new Annex N. It establishes the location for hardness test impressions for HFW full body normalized or quenched in tempered pipe. This is the new figure that is found in Annexes H. J, and N. A revised and enhanced specification for welded jointers is now located in Annex M. Annex M adds a note that distinguishes mill jointers from double joints. The note uses language similar to wording that was in the previous 5L editions but omitted from the 44th and 45th editions. It states that double joints are not within the scope of API 5L. Annex M clarifies and expands the requirements for mill jointers. Requirements include welding method and qualification, process testing, workmanship and inspection, non-destructive testing, weld repair, and marking. New figure M1 shows the identification marking sequence. The marking of the segments used shows the segment that is closest to the end being viewed listed first or at the top of the list. When standing near the A end of the jointer, segment A information is listed first. And when standing at the C end of the jointer, the information for segment C is listed first. Annex N is a new annex that has been added to specify additional provisions for PSL2 pipe that is ordered for applications with designs that require longitudinal plastic strain capacity. This concludes our review of the 46th edition of API 5L. So, what's next for the document? API procedures require that all standards must be reviewed every five years and either revised, reaffirmed, or withdrawn. There are already work groups working on changes that will affect the 46th edition. These items will be balloted and, if they pass, they will become part of API 5L. Perhaps the new items will be added as an addendum to the 46th edition, or maybe they will appear in the 47th edition. If you're not already involved in API committee work, becoming involved is easy. The task group on line pipe typically meets twice per year. Individual work groups may meet more often. Meetings are open to the public. For more information, visit api.org. Thank you for your interest in API Specification 5L.